Good morning, everyone. Today is day 19 of school closures in our district, and it is Tuesday. I hope you had a great spring break. So you should have had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to relax a bit. Uh, I know some of you chose to use that time to get a little bit caught up on some work if there were things that you or your families were hoping to get done. So good job to you. I checked our Moby Max points today. Um, for today, we have 1,768 points out of 2,000. I'll say that again, 1,768 points out of 2,000 for our goal of a pizza party and a free tablet for the classroom by July 15th. Oh, that's exciting. We're really getting close. So congratulations to those of you who have been logged in. And if you're just seeing this video and you've not had a chance to log in, go for it. Go log into your Moby Max and see what you can get done on there. I've pushed out some new assignments. So if you are seeing some things that were not there before, that is why. If you're having any issues after having the new assignments come through, then um, please, families, let me know if things are looking different or strange. Um, you might be jumping into a assessment to level out where you should be boys and girls. If that starts off seeming super easy, that's okay. You can still work through it. I know some students were concerned that they were getting, um, a placement level test that started them with identifying the alphabet. Um, so I had set the placement test to just automatically, um, come to you and they started at kindergarten level. So for some families, I did reset that um, so that you could use your time, you know, a little little bit better, but it will get you leveled out. So if you start a placement test and it seems too easy, you can either message me families or you can let them push through it. Uh, eventually it will even them out. So it's up to you. Let's see. So since I checked Moby Max on Thursday night, <clears throat> the following students have logged in to help us get some more points. Aaliyah logged in. Thank you, Aaliyah. Evan logged in. Awesome, Evan. Briar logged in. Thank you, Briar. Brody logged in. Great job, Brody. Logan logged in. Thank you, Logan. And Talon logged in. Thank you, Talon. Some of those students even logged in either over the weekend or on a totally non-school day. So awesome for you for logging in and getting that done. Thank you. Um, kindness Rock update. The St. Ferial Island is flooded. It's just not very safe right now. And all of the other uh, like public parks um, in the city are closed. So I have not had an opportunity to release our Kindness Rocks yet because I want to make sure I find a place that is okay for you to go and save. So I will be working on that. Writing assignments. If you are a second grader, take a look at your Tuesday journal recommendations from your homeroom teachers and work on that. You're welcome to send me an email copy or just write me a letter too. It's been a while since I've heard from some of you in my writing group. Second grade math, you do have your activities from your homeroom teachers in the packets. Um, if you're starting to run out of work, that is okay. There's always Moby Max, so feel free to hop on there and challenge yourself to some more difficult material. If you have been on there a lot, you might notice your lessons are getting harder. And that's great because you're growing. It will automatically give you lessons as you pass them. 80% is my expectation to move forward at this time because you are home and I'm not really sure how much extra help you might need. So 80% and you should be able to move on to the next activity. Let's see here. Third grade. We are still talking about working on the order of operations and the parentheses. So third grade math students, we should be through page 213 in your math journal, which I actually met with your teachers last week and found out you do have these, <laughs> or you should have these. So families, uh, if you have not seen this little orange workbook, um, your third grade students should have this at home. Okay, and one of the things that they are usually responsible for in my math center's class is math boxes. So math boxes look like this. And 
Page 213 is the math boxes for lesson 610. So lesson 610 is where we will be um, this week. So the math boxes on page 213 are due between now and the end of the week. If you've not had a chance to work on any pages prior to page 213 and you are a third grade math student, by all means be practicing in your math journal. So that should be your student math journal volume two, um, anything on or before page 213. Remember, boys, girls, and families, if you are having a hard time with math boxes, you do have access to the student reference book. These little pages are clues for reteaching and examples. The student reference book can be found on your ConnectEd. So if you know how to get into your ConnectEd Everyday Math Online Games, you also have access to a digital copy of your student reference book. So families, if your student is struggling with a suggested skill, I recommend having them log into their student reference book on Connect Ed and follow the page numbers recommended in the math boxes. They should get you close. Sometimes I've noticed that the page numbers that are recommended in the math boxes aren't exactly where the best help will be, but usually within five pages before or after that um, has some tips and examples and some vocabulary review. So that's a great tool for them. Moving on, if you're a math student or a writing student and you don't want to stick around, by all means, you can head out. We're going to start talking a little bit about phonics and reading work. Second graders in my reading centers, let's take a look at some review work for phonics. Last week, we worked a little bit on taking a word and putting a new initial sound at the beginning. And that initial sound blended with the sounds that were there to create a new word. This week, what we're going to work on is deleting the initial phonemes or taking off the first sound of words. So let's try a few of those together. And then we'll do these every day this week just for practice. So deleting initial phonemes is the lesson. Um, I'm gonna say a word, then I invite you to say the word on your side of the screen. Then I'm going to tell you which sound to delete. I'm gonna say without, for example, I might say without. <sighs> then you would tell me the remaining part of the word. Here's an example using p. pride. You say pride without p. what's left. P. Ride. So you take off the p, you have a ride left. Let's try another one. Gray, say gray, good job. Without g, what's left? G, ray, that's right. Ray is left, good job. Bright, say bright. Without b, what's left? B, right. That's right. Right is what's left. Here's the last one. I'm not going to give as many clues. Say crust without the k. What's left? If you said rust, you're right. Good job. We'll work more on that tomorrow, second graders. If you want to stick around to see some of the third grade lesson, please do. We're going to move right along. Third graders, last week we talked about some vocabulary words. We had some new sight words and we started reading about Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Eunice Kennedy Shriver was a biography. Remember biographies are the story of someone's life. It's the details of what happened in their life. This one is a biography rather than an autobiography because it was written by Jeff Fairburn rather than Eunice herself. Remember, an autobiography is written by that person. Essential question, continuing for this week, is what do good citizens do? What do good citizens do? And we were reading about Eunice and her work um, with the Special Olympics. We had some vocabulary words, so let's go through those. Here's some words you should just already know. Repeat after me. Foundation. A foundation is a group that works to do something. These children jumped rope so they could raise money. The money will go to a foundation. What's my word? 
good job. Remarkable. Something remarkable is incredible or amazing. David is a remarkable soccer player. What's my word? Now, these are the red words. So these are the ones that we focus on during the week and they're typically on the test. Horrified. When someone is horrified, he or she is filled with great fear, horror, or dislike. Paul and his mother were horrified by this scary movie. What's my word? Unfairness. Unfairness is the state of being unfair or unjust. The baseball player discussed the unfairness of the referee's call. What's my word? Citizenship. Citizenship is the position of being a citizen of a country with all the rights, duties, and privileges that come with it. Planting a tree in your community is an example of good citizenship. What's my word? Proposed. To have proposed something means to have suggested someone or something to others for their consideration. Mom proposed that they look online to find the answer to Tina's question. What's my word? Continued. When something is continued, it goes on without stopping. Justin continued to read his book all afternoon. What's my word? Waver. To waver means to stop a moment when being unsure. Ted's confidence started to waver when he forgot the answer. What's my word? Participate. To participate means to join with others or take part in something. Barb and her friends like to participate in sack races at the picnic. What's my word? And the last one is daring. Something that is daring is courageous and bold. One brave penguin made a daring dive into the sea. What's my word? Daring. Now, chapter two of Eunice Kennedy Shriver, we're just going to read page seven, and then I'll let you head on back to whatever else you're doing for today. A life of public service. And here's a photograph of Eunice. Looks like she's playing ball. The caption says, Eunice thought that sports, exercise, and fun could make people's lives better. I agree. In 1953, Eunice married Sergeant Shriver and became Eunice Kennedy Shriver. So that was her married name. Eunice had five children. She still found time for, well that says in other words, had time for, she still found time for helping people with intellectual disabilities. Remember if you have an intellectual disability, then there are certain parts of your brain that struggle with learning. Sometimes it ends up affecting your speech or your ability to do physical things. Eunice ran the Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Foundation. The foundation was a family charity. Oh, big bold word. I bet it's in the glossary. Glossaries are usually in the back of a book if it's an informational text like this one. So the word was charity. Big bold word, charity, page seven. Here it is. A charity, an organization that helps people who are poor, who are sick, or face other challenges. Okay, so their charity helped people who face the challenges of intellectual disabilities and how that affected their lives. The foundation looked for better ways to help people with intellectual disabilities. There it is. So I see what we're at, that we are at 13 minutes for today. It's been a great Tuesday with you. Thanks for joining me. <clears throat> we'll look more at all of this stuff tomorrow. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Uh,